So for most people today, I think we're going to be taking a trip down memory lane. If you type in Givenchy gentlemen into any search engine, including YouTube's, you're going to find a lot of the recent version of it. Well, today we're taking a trip back to 1974, if I'm not mistaken. And this one is a fragrance composed by Paul Leger. It's called gentlemen, the original gentleman. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this patchouli based fragrance. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's video and I tell you all about Givenchy Gentlemen, I'm sure you remember this one from 1974. I do want to start things off by mentioning that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Make sure to hit that bell icon so you could be notified whenever I do upload these videos to the channel. And of course, give this video a thumbs up if you learned something today or if you took something of value from today's episode. Now, the first thing that I want to mention is kind of a warning to consumers. If you're looking to purchase any of the gentleman fragrances from Givenchy, you have to pay very close attention to the year and you also have to familiarize yourself with the color of the bottle because you might be wanting to purchase the 1974 version and then you end up finding something that was released more recently but it has a very similar name and there's one called Gentleman Cologne and Gentleman Reserve Privé and Gentleman This and Gentleman That. So it can be confusing and I really do feel bad for consumers that are not aware of the multitude of gentlemen's that have been released throughout the years but here we're talking about and taking a look at the original so this one composed by Paul Leger at the time I believe he was a Fermanish perfumer I looked him up online I couldn't really find too much information and um, the other two fragrances for which he's responsible are two fragrances by the brand Cacharel. So I think this was kind of like a one hit wonder almost. This is certainly the only men's fragrance that he's been credited for. Um, he might have composed other fragrances, I'm not entirely sure, but this is a patchouli based fragrance and in the opening it's awesome. I think this is probably the best fragrance that was released in the year 1974 and I'll stand by that. I actually looked up the year and this is definitely on the top. So here we have patchouli, rose and let me tell you something in the opening it's kind of a chocolatey patchouli that you're gonna get, kind of reminiscent of Noir de Noir by Tom Ford, but you do have some animalic ingredients residing in the base. You have that typical sort of oak moss, vetiver vibe that is so characteristic of fragrances released in the 70s and early 80s as well. In any case, I'm excited to give you my in-depth breakdown of the smell. Let's take a quick look at the presentation. So as soon as you spray this fragrance, either on a test strip or on your skin, you're gonna get that bright and vibrant patchouli ingredient. And it's a chocolatey patchouli. So some variations of patchouli can be a little bit on the dirty side of things. That's not what you're gonna get here. As a matter of fact, there's a nice bit of citrus in the opening to clean things up. So there's lemon and tarragon. The tarragon is an aromatic ingredient. It gives a kind of an herbal vibe to it, but it's not overly strong. You also have a little bit of rose in here. So that patchouli and rose combination. I mean, you can see where fragrances like Noir de Noir took their inspiration from. It really is a beautiful introduction. Now the chocolatey quality of the patchouli unfortunately starts to die out right around 10 to 15 minutes. And then you're left with more of an earthy vibe on account of the oak moss that is lingering in the base, as well as the vetiver. So the vetiver in here is also not dirty. So that's a good thing, right? Like these are two ingredients that could have potentially been on the dirty and overly earthy side of things. And they're not like the vetiver is still quite crisp and clean. And I think the citrusy um, facets of the lemon are contributing to the clean quality of the vetiver and the other ingredients. But then you also have that oak moss in there that you smell it and you're like, aha, this is a fragrance from the 70s or the 80s, just because that was the predominant trend back then. The earthy texture, if you will, lingers for a very, very long time. So we're talking five, six, seven hours. It all depends on the performance you get on your skin. It is an eau de toilette, so we can't knock it for not lasting past that six hour mark. 
and I'm sure it's undergone many, many reformulations throughout the years. And unfortunately, that happens to be the fate of many great fragrances, including classics like the original Gentleman. But you do have uh, something animalic in the base, and it's an animalic ingredient that I would kind of equate to the smell of like a Lapidus Pour Homme by Ted Lapidus. Now, another ingredient that's also found in Lapidus Pour Homme, if I'm remembering correctly, is honey. So it's funny, it's like, wait, there's something woodsy, there's something green in here, and of course the patchouli is the star of the show, but then there's also something sweet in here as well. And funny enough, I think it's a combination of vanilla, or in the case of this fragrance, ethyl vanillin. I think it's a combination of that, honey, and cinnamon. So interestingly enough, you have this spicy sweetness in the opening, and I think that's another reason why the patchouli has that sweetness. And so it is a chocolatey sweetness because that is a quality inherent with the patchouli, but I think the sweetness is also brought out on account of the honey and the cinnamon and the vanilla and some of these other sweet ingredients. I'm also, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a nice bit of amber in the dry down as well, just some resins coming together to join the vanilla to create this sort of amber accord. But honestly, if I were to give it like a tiered hierarchy or a breakdown, I would say 50% of the smell is patchouli. Then you have another 20%, which is green in terms of the oak moss and the vetiver. And then the remaining 30% is sweets and animalic ingredients. So the animalic nature of the fragrance is not overly strong to the point where you're gonna smell it and you're gonna be like, oh, smells animalic or smells musky or smells this. But I think that there's enough of that in here to remind you of decades past and the types of fragrance that really proliferated those years and this being one of them. I think it's a beautiful fragrance. I do see people wanting to wear other fragrances in place of this one though, especially if as a green ingredient, you preferred something like fir balsam or you preferred something like oak moss or you want something that's more vetiver heavy as opposed to patchouli because I know patchouli can sometimes be associated with the hippie era we're talking about the late 60s now. So in any case, beautiful fragrance. I think it's a classic. People will remember it. And I think that had it not been for that animalic ingredient that's lingering in the base, this fragrance in many ways would have still been quite modern, especially if people are still wearing, you know, Noir de Noir by Tom Ford. I can certainly see the modernity of this fragrance having been preserved had it not been for that animalic ingredient. But aside from that, I actually do find this fragrance to be rather um, modern as long as it's worn in a very elegant manner, special occasion, nice suit and tie. And also if it's worn by somebody who's a little bit older, maybe 30s, 40s, 50s, not a high school student is basically what I'm saying here. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. Now, first up in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, I think a lot of fragrances follow trends in the 70s and 80s and they still follow trends today. But at the time when this fragrance was released, it was absolutely a mainstay, an amazing composition by Paul Leger. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Last name is spelled L-E-G-E-R. I'm not sure um, what his ethnicity is. So this one overall smell, great. A little animalic though, so just a fair warning there. Longevity on this one is about seven hours. Projection on this one is about a good 45 minutes upon initial application. It did start to radiate within an elbow's length up until hour four or five. It disappeared around hour six or seven. In terms of the versatility, definitely has a little bit of an old school vibe because of all those green ingredients in here. Definitely masculine leaning. I think this one can be worn in every season of the year, maybe not the summertime, unless you're wearing it indoors. And I do think this one will cater to the sensibilities of somebody who's a little bit older. In terms of the presentation, I do like the presentation. My goodness, it's been around now for 40 plus years, right? If I'm not mistaken. My final verdict on this fragrance is it's a classic. It's a masterpiece. Not as timeless as I wish it were because of that animalic ingredient that I alluded to earlier, but I think it's a great fragrance. And you can see how more modern releases have taken inspiration from it. Very well done patchouli. Unfortunately, I'm sure it's been reformulated throughout the years, but thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video or if you took something of value from this review, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit that bell icon so you could be notified every time I do upload future videos to the channel. 
and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It would really mean a lot to me. Love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.